Thank you for joining the NBMI experience today. We expect this to be life-changing for you as it has been for us. Let's get right to the word. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about pregnancy, and you'll understand why I did what I did today here in a second. This preaching was prepared almost two years ago, going back to the whole analytical part of, of who I am. And I'm very scheduled, and I am like two years ahead, more or less, in my preachings. And it was interesting because I've been sharing with so many of you that, that share with me about how this word is on time. I even received a call from Florida from Pastor Robert, and he told me, Pastor Joel, you have no idea. I, I walked into a church this week on Thursday, and I realized that the preaching that the pastor was bringing was on pregnancy as well. He goes, it's not coincidental. It's just the way that God works. And why it's so important to me or why it's so symbolic to me is because if you look at the original slide in this the birth that it's showing here is the birth of Jesus Christ the original background to this is not modified with something that had to do with Jesus Christ it had to do with his coming and what better time than today to talk about his coming what better time than today to talk about his birth now we all know that he wasn't born on December 24th we know that he was born they say April 24th because it was around my birthday but we know he wasn't born during December 24th. We just know that that's what society has adopted into being the day that we celebrate his birthday or the holidays, as they call it these days. You know, and it's very important because the birth of Jesus brought forth change to the world. I mean, forever. You see, no matter how bad this world gets and it's getting bad, it will never ever be able to erase who Jesus Christ was. No matter how much uh, uh, um, uh, agita and how much problems the world creates because of the mention of Jesus, they will never ever be able to erase the presence of Jesus from what we know as this world. It doesn't matter if they take every Bible and burn it. People will know it by memory. Do you think it's a coincidence that God allows us to memorize verses that lift us up, me memorize verses that, that build us up? It's not a coincidence. What happens is that God knows that as time progresses, this world is going to get worse and worse and worse. And what happens is that we can't just rely on someone else having that child. We have to have that child on our own. And over the last four, five, six weeks, whatever it's been now, we've been talking about giving birth to this child. We've been talking about giving birth to the gift. We've been talking about giving birth to, to that gift that's inside of us. You know, and, and last week or the week before, we talked about post-mature births, and that's what I want to pick up from today, and I'm going to finish this today, hopefully. And, and the post-mature births, we talked about how it was so dangerous to have these post-mature births because what happens when you have a post-mature birth, you can kill the child because of the fecal matter that's inside of the placenta with the child because it comes to a point that the gift outgrows the placenta where it's in. Come on. Think about that for a second. There's going to be a time where your gift is going to outgrow you. Your gift wasn't designed for you. What? Your gift wasn't made for you. Your gift was made for others. And others' gifts were made for you. That's why the church is so important. That's why I, I, I just, I chuckle when I hear these pastors and I hear people talk about church at home. And they say, well, I'm going to do church my way. Congratulations, do church your way, but it's not the right way. The church was designed way before we were even a thought. And God designed it perfectly. Why is it that today this generation feels like they have to modify everything? Why fix something if it ain't broken? Why am I going to go? And trust me, I do it all the time. I go and I say, let me start this project. I just want to fix this. this. This Friday night, I spent hours fixing a drain that really I didn't need to take apart, but I said, let me do this the right way. So next thing you know, I'm running to Home Depot before it closes just to be able to get the pieces I need, and I spend time and time and time. Why? Because I tried to reinvent something that wasn't broken. Just leave it alone. Tell the person next to you, leave it alone. The gift of God, the predestined reason that God wanted to give you this gift was because he knows that what's inside of you is going to benefit others. And once you're able to release, listen to this, once you're able to release what's inside of you, you're going to be able to accept what others want to give you. Too many of us are stingy with our gift. Therefore, we think everyone else is stingy. 
You ever heard that saying that if you're a certain way, you think everyone else is the same way, and you think that way, and that's the way? It, it's not like that. God has predestined people, as he told the prophet, there are still 7,000 who have not lowered their knees before Baal. You're not the only one going through what you're going through. I'm not the only one going through the suffering that I go through. You're not the only one that's sick. You're not the only one that's struggling. You're not the only one. There's other people that are there on the, the front line fighting with you. But because you're keeping your weapon in your sheath and you have your shield down, you keep getting hurt. And God is telling you today, pick your shield up, pull out your sword, because it's time for you to give birth and be able to see the blessings of God that want to come over your life. But we keep looking down the line and saying, well, he's not doing it and she's not doing it, so why should I do it? Somebody has to do it. That somebody was Jesus Christ. Nobody was doing it. When Jesus Christ came to the world, there wasn't one person that was able to abide by the law. They wanted the law. They fought Moses. Understand this. God didn't predestine the Jews to have the law. God predestined them to be able to walk and have freedom. And they said, we want to be like everyone else. We want to have a king. We want to have this. We want to have that. And therefore came Saul. After they had all the judges, the Samsons, the Debras, the Jehus, they ended up coming into Samuel. And they said, Samuel, we want to be like everyone else. So God allowed Saul to come forth because they wanted to be like everyone else. But God does not want you and me to be like everyone else. He wants us to be exactly the way he designed us to be. Why is it that we say happy holidays and not Merry Christmas? Why is it that we walk around and we're careful with what we say, but everyone else says whatever they want? Why am I afraid to tell people that I'm a Christian? Why can't I go outside and evangelize to somebody because I'm afraid of what they're going to think or what they're going to say? Why can't I talk to this person or that person about Christ? Why can't I talk to my mother my brother? And don't raise your hands because I know a lot of you this week are going to go and you're going to be the anti-Christian sitting down, eating the pernil, drinking the whiskey and everything else. Come on. But maybe it's your time. Maybe it's your time to stand up and say, no, thank you. I don't want the whiskey. I'll give, give me the pernil. I'll eat that. But maybe it's time for your family to recognize the gift of God in you. Maybe God brought you here today. Amen. Maybe God brought you here today because he wants you to give birth today to courage, to desire, to oomph. To give birth to that passion that carries you to the point where you can look at somebody and say, I am a Christian. Oh, you're one of those hallelujahs. That's right. I am a hallelujah. I do believe in a Christ that's bigger than everything. And you may say, but pastor, why should I? I don't know. Maybe because he came to this earth when he didn't have to. And maybe because he made miracles when he didn't have to. And maybe because he died on the cross when he didn't have to. And maybe because he went down to hell when he didn't have to. And maybe because he had to pimp slap the devil and take the keys from the devil when he didn't have to. Maybe that's why we should do it. You know, in ministry, you get so many people that say, but pastor, I'm so tired of being in this ministry because so-and-so is not doing their part and this person not doing their part. Who cares who's doing their part? That's them and God. What matters is what you're doing. Your pregnancy it has nothing to do with the people around you. When my wife and I were giving birth to our children, I didn't think about what this person was doing or that person was doing. My focus was on one thing, that baby. What's your focus on today? Are you focused on that baby? Or has it got to the point of post-maturity that you don't even realize the baby's there? It happens to Christians every day. We forget that there's something inside of us. That's when we start doubting. That's when our faith starts falling. That's what happened to Peter as he came out of that boat and he started sinking because he forgot what was there. He forgot what was in front of him. Right now, a lot of us are sinking in the water and we're saying, Lord, I'm about to start drowning. We're up to here. Amen. Can I get an amen for the real people that are willing to say, sometimes I just feel like I'm drowning, Lord. I know that there's a lot of good Christians here that you guys walk and you levitate when you walk. I'm not like that. I go through stuff. I deal with stuff. Sometimes I don't even understand why I am the way I am. You ever felt like that? Amen? You ever felt like, why am I reacting this way? This way? Why do I let people get to me this way? Why? 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 Who knows? The bottom line is that I got to come before God and say, God, I need you to change me. If this is not making me feel right in your presence, change this in me. I can't continue to do the obvious sins. Yesterday I was given a class 
for the ordination that we're taking, that we're doing next week on Sunday, and I invite you to all be here. Please be supportive and support your brethren that are going to be ordained next week. But I was given a class, and, and I talked about the obvious sin. You know, a lot of us, we are, we are bordering on the line of losing our salvation because of the obvious sin. Example, cigarettes. Ooh, pastor, don't talk about cigarettes. You don't know what you're talking about. Let me get into your face just a little bit today, okay? Let's talk about the $12 a pack that you're paying. Better yet, the $12 a pack that you're wasting. Want to save some money? Give me a lighter and I'll give you some loose leaf paper. Burn that. Let's talk about the fact that that spirit that's manifesting itself through you grabbing a cigarette and smoking it is the problem is not the cigarettes. The problem is that vice that's inside of you because it's going to transfer from cigarettes to alcohol. You notice how they go hand in hand when you're in society? Why? Because you just opened up the door, the gateways, and everything is running in and saying, I'm throwing a party in Joel's house, and I don't care who knows it. Now, wouldn't we look at someone who's pregnant that's smoking or drinking alcohol and say, are you stupid? What are we? Are we not pregnant? Not with just a child, but with the Holy Spirit of God inside of us. Are we not pregnant? Are we not at the point where we're about to burst? How is it that we can find the obvious sins and continue to allow the obvious sins to come into us and contaminate the child, the gift, the beautiful thing that's inside of us? Sometimes we don't get it because we get so, we get so physical, so analytical, so statistical that we say, well, one thing has nothing to do. It has everything to do with the other. Oh, but it's the, the temple of God is the temple of God. We cannot continue to deteriorate this temple simply because we want to be like everybody out there. God didn't call you to be like them. God called you to let them be like you. Why is the church so watered down today? Because we're doing exactly that. We're letting people be just like us because we're being just like them. And God is saying, I need you to give birth. You got a lot of fat people walking around with bellies that are this big, with babies that are 18 years old inside of that belly. And they say, can I come out yet? Not yet. I'm not ready yet. God, is it your time? I need confirmation. How many of us are not stuck in confirmation talking about God? I just need you to show me. So he shows you this. But God, I need you to show me. And he shows you that. I remember one time somebody told me, Pastor, I was on my knees in front of the altar and I'm so upset at God. And I said, why? Because I told God that you had to come up to me, you had to put your hand over me, you had to pray in this language, and you had to give me this number if it was you. I said, are you crazy? So now God has to deviate from his plan and stop just to tell you, blue, number 17, you sunk my battleship. Come on. There's a baby inside of you. What other evidence, what other proof, what other confirmation do you need? God is coming out clear as day today and telling you that thing that's inside of you, that thing, that gift that's inside of you that everybody tells you is in there, it's really in there. It's not a coincidence. It's not maybe. It's not perhaps. It's in there. Some of our babies are getting too big already, and we need to give birth. And you may say, but Pastor, why? Why? Why should I give birth? What happens when we don't give birth, just before I continue on, this post-mature birth process, or the reason why we go through this post-mature birth is because of fear. Fear a lot of times because of things that we determined to do. We decided to make this decision. You know, one of the crazy things is when people get upset at God for things they decided to do. You know, they, they pray to God, they say, God, show me if this is your will, and he shows you that it's not, and you still do it. You go into business, and you say, Lord, show me that it's your will. He says, don't go into business with that person. Don't go into business over there, but I do it anyway. And then when everything goes wrong, God, how can you let this happen to me? You ever done that? Come on. Honest people, raise your hand. Come on. That's the truth. And then what happens is now we create, we get into this fear bubble, this bubble of fear where we're afraid to make any decisions because we're going to think the same outcome is going to happen again. One thing that I will tell you is if you listen to yourself, you will do it again. But if you start listening to God, then things are going to be different. And the post-maturity or the reason that that post-maturity is in us or that it, it's created in us is because we're afraid to listen to the voice of God because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. God doesn't make sense. I'm here to tell you today something that maybe you've never heard. God makes no sense to humans.
His will makes no sense to humans. It doesn't make sense that he tells you to turn the other cheek when someone insults you. It doesn't make sense that he tells you to give when you don't have. You ever thought about that? I mean, there's times where, where honestly, I, 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 I've shared with you guys, I see the reports of the finances that come in, and I say, how can this person give tithes? I know what they're going through right now. But I see how God starts elevating that person little by little by little because of their faithfulness. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't. That's the truth. It doesn't make sense sometimes. I'm like, God, but why is this happening? And he says, just trust in me. It doesn't make sense that when a professional doctor tells you you got three months to live, that God tells you you're going you're gonna, to, uh, three months to live, and the God tells you you're not going to die. All of a sudden, you got to look at that doctor and say, doctor, I got news for you. I'm not dying. What? I'm not dying. But I went to Harvard. But I spent, I don't care where you went. I went to the school of Christianity. I give birth. This is the key here. Why did Jesus Christ come to this planet? He came to this planet to gift the planet with the gift of salvation, the greatest gift ever known to the world. Amen? Why give birth? The process of giving birth, in other words, duplicating oneself, is one of the primary reasons we were created and called by God. In chapter 10 of Romans, verse 14 or 15, and I invite you to open that up with me if you can. <clears throat> but how are people to call upon him who they have not believed in, whom they have no faith, on whom they have no reliance? And how are they to believe in him, adhere to, trust in, and rely upon him, um, whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without a preacher? And how can men... Be expected to preach unless they are sent. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring glad tithings. How welcome is the coming of those who preach the good news of his good things. Listen to this. How, how, how can we spread the news of the gospel if no one preaches? Can you imagine if myself or any other preacher that you know kept that gift inside of them and never preached? Eventually, over time, we wouldn't be known as Christians. The, the, religious, the religion of Christianity would be no, non-existent anymore because everyone stopped giving birth, because everyone said, no, I'm going to keep this inside. We have free will to decide to do whatever we want to do. But can you imagine if everyone simultaneously said, that's it, I'm done? From a pastor's perspective, I can't tell you how many times I have sat with people that have looked at me in the face and said, Pastor, I know I have this calling, but I'm not ready, and I don't want to do it. As a pastor, all I can do is say, you know your responsibility. You know the gift of God in you. If you decide to do it, I can't stop you. But the truth of the matter is that it pains me to see that. It pains me to see people, not just in church, but the problem is that usually when people say, I'm not ready, or I don't want to do this, I don't want to work in this ministry, I don't want to do that, what happens next is that the devil continues to creep in, and next thing you know, they walk out those doors. Because that's how the devil works. The devil says, let me just let you go of this, and then it's all over. But I ask you, as I asked the elders and the pastors this week, if there was a paycheck affiliated with your belief, would you ever stop coming to church? If every week you came here, you received a paycheck, would there be a week you wouldn't show up? If every week you came here, and every time you did something for God, someone said, here's $100, would you ever stop doing that? Why? Because we go to work, because we get paid. We come to church, and we worship God, and we praise God, and we work for God. Why? Because he's paid our price forever, forever. And unless we start seeing that for the way it is, we're always going to look and say, but what's in it for me? Pastor, I don't want to do this because this person and that person and this and that and this and that and it's cold and it's hot and it's black and it's white and it's green and it's yellow and we have every reason. But at the end of the day, I ask you, what would Jesus do? Would he tell you, I'm too tired today. I want to go to the beach today. I want to do this today. I want to do that today. I'm not ready. He went to the presence of God. He cried. He sweated blood from his pores and he said, God, let your will be done and not mine. What does that tell us? It means that at one point he said, I don't want to separate from you, but I realized that I got to go into hell to take the keys from hell so that Wayne could be saved, so that Peron could be saved, so that Adam could be saved, so that Roldan could be saved. I'm going down to hell just for them. But can you imagine if he said, no, I'm, I'm keeping this gift inside of me. Can you imagine if Mary said, God, I know you selected me, but it can't be me. 
It, 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 you got to give it to somebody else. Can you imagine if Mary said, no, I, I'm out. Thank you very much. I don't want it. Would God have lifted up someone else? Yeah. But can you imagine how, excuse me, dumb Mary would be to walk away from being the mother of the Messiah? We all look at it and we say, man, what's wrong with her, right? But what do we do? When we have the Messiah inside of us, the gift of God is just an extension of the Messiah. What's inside of you is an extension of him. How do you know that, Pastor? Because I know that from my own gifts, I couldn't be behind the pulpit. I know that it's not me who does this. It's him. I know when my wife is up here worshiping, it's not her. It's him. I know when God touches someone, it's not us. It's him. We're just an extension of him. When you play the drums, it's not you. It's him. When you play the piano, it's not you. It's him. Why? Because you've allowed yourself to go through the process of pushing that baby out and you're able to see the gift of God in operation in and through you. It's not because you're good. It's not because you're naughty and it's not because you're nice. It's because he chose to use you. And, and I'm so happy, and, I, and you know, it's not to blow up anybody's spot, but I'm so happy of the fact that I have my old Sunday school teacher with me. It, 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 it came in such a right time. It, it just, it touches me in ways that I can't express to you. Because I, I, I'm able to transport myself back to when I was a kid and realize that if it wasn't for women and men like her that decided to give their time at that time, we wouldn't be here. You know, I look at the example of my mother and I look at the example of uh, uh, Sister Juana and all, and, and whoever brought you to the Pastor Christ. And if you think about it for a second, if those people didn't do their part, if they didn't sit on that table and give birth to that child and speak that word into your life, you wouldn't be here right now. You're a direct result of somebody sitting on this table and pushing that baby out. You're a direct result of someone putting their legs up in that stirrup and saying, this baby is coming out and being able to see that baby develop. You're a direct result of that. And now God is saying, now I need you to give back what was yours. Your free will. I need you to give birth to what's inside of you. I need you to take that gift and put it forth for someone else. Why? Because if we don't, we stop an entire generation. And God doesn't want to do that. God wants us to continue. In this year, 2015, and next Sunday as I begin this new preaching series that's going to be called The Time of Peace, I need you to understand that in 2015, though it's a time of peace, it's a time of peace because the baby is born. I'm dressed like this today because I believe that today God wants to give birth to your child. I believe that it partially has happened already, but I don't think it's done yet. This table's up here because I need you to realize the sacrifice that needs to be done from your part today. I'm dressed like a doctor. Symbolism of the greatest doctor. Of the one and only. The one that is the doctor of all doctors. And he's telling you, look, this table is here because I want you to realize that I need you to giddy up. Get on that table. I need you to sacrifice your joy. I need you to sacrifice your comfort. I need you to sacrifice. I mean, I can't tell you the amount of time and the amount of discomfort that my wife went through in seeing her when she was pregnant. All the mothers should know exactly what I'm talking about. The discomfort, not being able to sleep at night, feeling like a job of the hut, feeling like you can't sleep on this side or that side, seeing your legs swell up, your ankles swell up to the point where you couldn't walk anymore. But somehow in that moment that the birth happened, you looked at that child and it didn't matter that you didn't fit into your jeans anymore. And it didn't matter that your legs looked like hulks. Those things didn't matter to you because you were able to look at that child, to contemplate the beauty of that child even though they're very ugly when they're born. Some of them, yikes, I think they're still babies. Some of them. <laughs> but to be able to look at that child and say, it was all worth it. Today, I ask you, are you ready to be uncomfortable? I ask you, are you ready to give birth to that promise? 
Are you willing to push that baby out? Thank you for joining the NBMI experience today. Like, comment, and subscribe at www.facebook.com front slash NBMINY or our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com front slash NBMICHURCH. Also check out our new and improved website at www.newbeginningschurches.com. And finally, check out our new awesome church app, available on both Android and Apple platforms. Search your app store for NBMICHURCH and be blessed.